Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Octavia Pratiwirasal from C class 2017. And I'm going to talk about language and identity in the part 13 from this book. So according to the book, there are five, there are some areas to address research on identity on language identity I mean so the first one is identity and investment so the researcher found that the highest level of motivation did not necessarily translate into good language learning and that unequal relation of power between language learners and target language speaker was common theme in the data for this reason the researcher developed uh, the construct of investment to complement construct of motivation in the field of SLA. The construct of investment inspired by the work of Bourdieu by, uh, in 1977 until 1991. Uh, Bourdieu said that the signal of social and historical constructed relationship of learners to the target language and their often ambif ambivalent desire to learn and practice it and practice it. If learners infest the target language, they do so with the understanding that they will occur with a wide range of symbolic and material researchers, which will in a turn increase the value of their cultural capital. And the next one is identity and imagine communities. In many language classrooms, the community may be some extent a reconstruction of the past communities and historically constructed relationship, but also a community of the imagination, imagination I mean, which is a desired community that others that offers the possibilities for an in age range of identity option in the future and the next one is identity categories and educational change so this is the one of innovative researcher that address this issue uh, and does not regard such identity categories as a variable but rather as set a relationship that are socially and historically constructed within particular relationship of power. And the last one is identity and resistance. So in this part, it is talking about the relationship between language, identity, and resistance that has become a compelling and a fruitful area of research in language education, educational background while larger structure constraint and classroom practice my portion learners in undesirable ways uh, in this part the learners with human agency can resist this portion in the innovative and unexpected ways as the following three examples okay my name is Devi Aswina Balfas and I'm going to talk about language and identity it is chapter 14 about gender identities and language education. So this chapter explores the way that gender social relations and ideologies of gender mediate people's experience in learning and using additional language. The ways that men and women use language to form identities and negotiate their social relationship. However, there are still relatively few comprehensive treatments of gender which investigate how gender identity identities are performed in educational contexts or how gendered identities relate to language learning. The author examined the concept of gender by discussing the theoretical frameworks guiding past and present research on genders, and the, and the author also discussed important findings by situating significant research studies into two broad strands, which are, the first one is that how gender identities of second or foreign learners are shaped by structural constraints and obstacles, and the second is that to summarize the goals of researchers who explore how learners respond to gender discourses. So, so the first point is that from sex to gender, a shift in terms. 
Most scholars traded sex and as a binary category and as a static identity of speakers that could be correlated with speech patterns. Male and female sex was treated as an independent variable and was used to study linguist variations such as pronunciation or grammar differences. The purpose of this research has been to understand how social class structure Structures such as genders, class, and race are related to linguistic firms and to provide socially based explanations of linguist variation and change. Variationist studies have been critiqued for what has been called the correlation fallacy or the failure to fully explain the distribution of socially structured linguist variation. Much research in the variation paradigm treats variables such as sex of the speakers as the cause of variation rather than investigating why it is that men and women and other sex identity choose to speak the way they do. And some researcher, its name is Tajil, has tentatively suggested that women prefer standardized norms because of their powerless positions in society and their need to enhance their social positions through linguist through linguistic and other means, but more, but most variationists do not seek explanatory theories in their work on male and female differences. And also, some research, uh, a researcher, its name is Lakoff, she said in her work, Women's Language, she described that women characterized by features such as greater usage of, mod of models such as should, cold, and might, and more negative politeness like you wouldn't mind, would you? And different vocabulary such as more color terms like navy, violet, and uh, pastel, and the uh, distinct sex of adjectives like exquisite, lovely, divine, and uh, Lakoff also said that women that women's language is a result of patria of pat patria patriarchal patriarchal social relations social relations and is a language that reflect powerlessness and subordination. And Lakoff Lakoff also takes a theoretical perspective as the starting point in her work, explaining sex-based language differences as the result of men's dominance over women. But and uh, on the other hand, the other researcher, uh, its name, his, her, its name is Tanned, argues that men and women use language differently because they have been exposed to different sociolinguistic subcultures and they employ interactional features such as overlap, eye contact, and topic initiation differently, which sometimes lead to what uh, what Tanen calls cross-cultural miscommunication. Even if both Lakov and Tannins got so much uh, argued and critics from the uh, from scholars, both Lakovs and Tannins were is considered seminal since they helped to popularize the view that language is the product of social relations. Rather than the cause, as it the as as is the case in much variation work, hence their work can be described as social construct constructionist in scope in that both treat men's and women's speech as the result of social of societal relations and societal relations and socializes and socialization processes. Research that addresses communication among men and women has increasingly focused on gender as a social and discuss and discussive construction in various contexts. The current interest in gender as performance uh, should not be seen as an evolution in ways of thinking about gender then, but rather as the framework that dominates current scholarship on gender across a number of disciplines. Even if gender has some impact for some people, but gender is not a characteristic, so people can talk differently based on their own styles and uh, the gender might affect it, but their environment also affected. And also the other point of in this chapter is that methods for studying gender. Through authorization and illegitimate 
illegitimation speakers may endorse or discredit particular social identities. Under the umbrella of discourse studies, narrative inquiry is emerging as an insightful methodology in sociolinguistic studies of gender as a way to better understand how men and women think and feel about their experiences interacting with others and how they discursively construct their respectiveness. And the other point is that access to language learning opportunities Much research on language learners focus on how they access opportunities to learn and to use the, lang the second language in the face of societal structures such as patriarchy, economic class, divisions and, war and poverty, racism, and anti-immigration sentiments. And the other point is that negotiating structural and material constraints At work, second language learners may or may not have opportunities to develop their, their second language. Individuals have been socialized toward education and whether their family is valid school best form of literacy. Research on literacy development in, 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 multi, in multilingual contexts has yielded much insight regarding the gender inequality girls and women face in gaining access to languages of socioeconomic power. And pedagogical practices that engage with structural constraints, teachers can develop strategies such as alternating between male and female students when, so when sol when soliciting student responses or organizing students into groups so that participation is, maxima is maximized. And uh, the, last, the last point is that negotiating discourse of genders While social structures such as, patri such as patriarchy and socioeconomic class may seem to be very obvious reasons that explain why women lack access to language education, it is also equally the case that societal expectation and belief about men and men circulate in the form of gender dis discourses are the basis of social structures such as patriarchy, which in turn acts as the structural constraints on women's lives and women's access to learning opportunities. Learners experience different gender identities in their second language, learn, and also le learners may find gender identities in, sec in the second language context appealing and hence their affiliation with this gendered ways of being may afford learners relative ease in learning and using their second language. Some, neg some negotiating discourse of gender is are, are first discussing assimilation to a new gendered identity, second resisting second language gender identities, third the role of gender discourses in classrooms and the fourth is that pedagogical application for gender discourse. So that's all the material for this chapter 14 which is the gender identities and language education. That's all from me. Thank you. In ethnicity, definition of ethnicity according to whether people commonly associate ethnicity with distinct based on nation, origin, language, religion, food, and other culture maker, and rest to distinct draw from the physical appearance, such as skin color, hair, texture, age, shape, and so on. And Omi and once similarly agro the people control race in different to different type of human body. But I am biased that that ethnicity not usually understood. Ethnicity Conceptuals is different way inside nation border is as well within the same commonly. This conceptualism can change upon the time. And next is methodology approach to study ethnicity of language. A sociolinguistic approach to study ethnicity is ideal for the three reasons. The first is Said ethnicity social construct. The social construction must implode, implode communication some way, whatever is language, 
or other semantic mean and the second is attending to the role of language in the construction of ethnic group and boundaries group recession is empirical data the third is exclaiming language factors post research to attend to at least as a complicit drug situationally bound practice next is methodological approach that sociolinguistic implies in the study of ethics is have to first one is this tennis centered model this model enable to classify pattern of ethnic dialogue and the second is multiple speed style and new graphic approach taking a more qualitative several sociolinguistic explore the way in which speaker draw on the feature of the ethnic dialect wherever real or imagined in the organization identity next is language and ethnicity in the united states <clears throat> the first one is african america american focus and descriptor and analysis to distinct ethnicity theory that is linked to african america speaker the second is athens completely open city is relative to language race nation immigrant and other social factor next is narrative america constructs to america latin who are united by a common linguistic heritage troops spanish legion tribal community in the united states say the portis asian american peace major implic of chinese immigrant during the california focus on issue of english language learning and tenants and the last is european american ethnic identity of european american are also socially constructed next is language and ethnicity in education in the sum model the first model is deficit model claiming that ethnic minority experience chronic school failure because they were cognitively they gain and culturally they prefer the second is difference model difference model explain how ethnic minor are not deficient but socialized into different set of cultural norm and that are not recognized or legitimes by mainstream school and the last is emergency model emergency model describe how ethnic group and most edu educational institution do not possess static characteristic as much they are constrained the nation with one at in other particular school context and next is language and socialism the first one is introduction language socialism deeper to association of language pragmatic and older culture knowledge through social experience and is often equipped with the development of cultural and communicative competence and next is ling ling language socialism linguistic the focus on mentor provide of comfort or offered associated to other so they can learn particular use of language and also the value next is implicit language socialism in cross culture education content classroom role or practice are commonly made broken and constructed although there may not be official rule book on which participant can turn so the rule may be explicitly stated in the course of line or explained in the early day of the course in the more general guideline regarding attendance 
next is research method and challenge in language socialism study the first one is drawing on tradition in linguistic anthropology and classroom research usually involving various approach to discourse analysis for example is competency analysis functional grammatical analysis Innotation analysis, mass language socialism research is ethnographic. Second is sign language socialist is related to developmental process of becoming competent in language in order communicative way of the complexity of the culture system is used. What here a long relationship is required. Next is practical implication of research on language socialism language socialism into educational discourse is relatively smooth and straightforward process that required for the duration of one school and beyond a talk is may plot procedure negative trial error and represent and reprimand all normal aspect of learning that what I can say thank you